welcome to Flory Models, I'm Philip Flory, kit view time. Today we've got Eddard's new 148 scale uh, Sabre. Now, this is the F86, they don't do an F86. This is obviously a rebox from somebody else, and judging by their recent reboxes, things like that, we're either thinking it's gonna be Hasegawa or Academy. All right, both in the kit. So basically what we've got down here is the Sabre. Now this is a limited edition, as they're saying. These two tend to hang around for a little while, but once they're gone, they're particularly hard to get again. So if you are thinking about doing this and grabbing one, now is the time to do it. We've got some lovely markings down here. So we've got Mad Marine down there, very famous uh, Sabre. In fact, all of these are very famous Sabres. So we should have some lovely markings down there in the kit. Your kit number for this one is 1163. And as you can see, you've got the usual bits and pieces as we're making our way around here and everything else. And I'm looking to see if it's got anybody's details who actually makes this one. So in the box, as with their other builds that we've looked at, you get that lovely mixed media thing. So you get a good kit to start with and you know, Eddard usually pick out the best manufacturer in that scale and things like that. Then they add all their good bits, okay? Now looking straight down here in the bag, we can see a little label here saying Japan. So it's not gonna be Academy. It's actually going to be the Hasegawa kit. Now, this is where I try and act all smug as if I know what I'm on about. This has been reboxed before by other people because I do believe the F86 F, which this one is, was also reboxed by Revel in the German markings. I think, check your references on that, but I'm pretty sure that's where I've done it because I've actually built that kit because to be honest, it was cheaper than the Hasegawa one, okay, and you do it like that. So basically, usual thing down here, talking about the F86 E and F, uh, the different versions that we've got down here in your multiple languages. So we've got the usual thing, talking about the parts. So as you can see down here, we also get Beautiful colour photo etch cockpit set, a couple of bits of photo etch for the rest of it. Resin looks like ejector seat system uh, and a few bits in the cockpit and the mask set and everything else like that. So you can see there's a few parts we're not going to be using down here in the kit uh, because obviously Hasegawa did do a few different versions. Okay, so making your way through, as usual thing you can see, standard cockpit, removing a lot of the surface detail and coming in with a colour photo etch set, which I do believe is your best bang for buck. If you ever want to upgrade your aircraft, your models, things like that, then basically go for a colour a photo etch set because that's basically it. the level of detail they can do is far better than my cockpit work uh, could ever be all right so there we go putting all those parts in there the usual thing usually we get a couple of ejector pin marks down inside this intake but we'll have a look okay and we've got the actual well down there so you've got a full length intake which is quite nice going to the first stage of the compressor uh, for the engine Okay, and then we'd be putting those in. Then we've got the tailpipe. You don't get the actual engine itself, so you've got the missing midsection, but that's the tailpipe for it coming out the other end. All right, usual thing with Sabres. So we said you basically got all these parts go in, then the two halves go together. A little bit of detail work is shown back here for the color callouts we're doing inside the speed brakes. Okay, and everything down like this. Wing section is simple as you can imagine, opening up a couple of holes depending on if you're having pylons and um, the fuel tanks on there, two halves, no positionable wings and that's quite an old kit, very nicely detailed, lovely recessed panel lines as we'll see, but generally uh, it's showing its age a little bit, shall we say. Okay, so usual thing, nose cone going in on the front and then obviously tail planes on and wing section going up underneath. Okay, and then we've actually got the uh, nose gear system going on there, the main gear being put together, sidewinder, which I've got stung by this before, I'll explain in a moment. Uh, and then obviously we've got the actual, the main gear going on, and then the wing tanks. Next up, obviously fitting the said items going down in there. Then we go back a few steps. So we've actually got the cockpit, the seat. So you get the harnesses for this and all the bits and pieces which detail the seat up to give you a lovely little options going down on there. Bits of photo etch around for livening up behind the cockpit uh, and obviously for the cockpit runners and all the things like that. And then obviously down here, we've got some more detail work and photo etch parts as you can see going in for the actual uh, canopy set and all the parts in there as you can see. Then it's a case of popping those all together. All right, which is pretty straightforward. And then adding the last of the thing. So we've got a couple of little wing fences down in here, positionable dive brakes, obviously you can have them open or closed. Okay, and we get some FOD covers, which is quite a nice touch with this kit. Usual thing then, uh, because obviously we've got the Eddard one, so it comes with all the Eddard goodies. So you've got a masking set for the wheels, for the canopies, and then you've got these stunning markings. So we've all know, um, 
Mick Mag Marine, uh, probably one of the most famous F86s out there. Beautiful markings and colors. And I have to say, if I was to do this one tomorrow, I'd be doing it in those markings. I just love them. But also I love this one as well, which is with the blue, which is very nice. Something a little bit different, okay? And things like that. And then we're just working our way down here. So these are all obviously all the Korean ones, as you can imagine working your way through them some beautiful different options down there as you can see and a couple of home birds stencil data and it's quite nice because we've actually got the details of picking out what colors are what when you'll be doing your metal work on here which is a very nice touch so you can just see what panels are different colors okay and with the last but no least we've got a little bit down here for an upgrade set which you can get which is going to be separate i do believe which is for the actual uh, dive brakes as you can see on the back and if you wanted to go with the wheels on there just like that now i say about getting stung because Back in a previous life when I did commissions, I built this said kit, uh, the Hasegawa one, and um, I did um, the Mav Marine one uh, in scale, if I remember correctly. Let me just check the date on it, in case they've changed it on this particular version. But I put some sidewinders on it. Okay, uh, 1953. Now, I put sidewinder missiles on it, because if I remember rightly, it called out for them, as this does as well. Thing to remember, the Sidewinder didn't earn to service with the US Air Force until 1964, and I think it was 1958. I'm sure somebody will say, no, you're wrong. But it was late uh, 50s with Sidewinder missiles for the Navy. The Navy took them first, then the Air Force took them in the early 60s. So by putting them on here, it doesn't actually work because the actual uh, uh, F-86F didn't actually use them, if I remember rightly. Um, it was a little bit later on. They were fitted with them after, but not in the marking period of that particular MiG. So, you can see down here, I'm not gonna get this one out because we know they'll be beautifully done. Ed, I'll do a great job on these because these are actually cartograph. And as we know, cartograph makes some of the best decals that we've seen out there. Beautifully, always in register, great color and everything else like that. So that's beautiful there. We've got down here the mask set, simple job. We've seen that one down there. And then just down here, we've got the color cockpit parts as you can see so we've actually got a three-piece looks system there so you've got the rear then sandwich them three ways the harnesses and obviously the bits and pieces on the seat and around the cockpit just like that then on the flip side we've actually got the metal work as well so down here as you can see we've got all the various parts that we're going to use around the cockpit and the areas like that then we have some of the little resin goodies and this is the beauty about the Eddard sets because let's face it they take normally the best kit and then put all the bits you really need to make it into a super kit so if you ever want to do them instead of having to go out and buy all the bits separately you can just buy these kits and to be honest it's why i bought this one i'd love to do a saber again uh, and doing it this way it comes with all the bits so we got down there lovely resin seat beautiful details as you can see just down there on that we've got the rear parts and the actual cushions and everything else and then down in here we've got the actual uh, rudder pedals seat bits uh, and all the rest of it and then this guy down here which i do believe has lost a bit that has broken off which is my only complaint to these and i can't even see it in the bag and i had a clean desk uh, there it is that's why you always keep the bits so <laughs> There's a little bit just broken off there just like that so we'll pop him in the bag and glue that down later that's come back out into the little baggie all right and zip that up <clears throat> wouldn't be too hard to scratch build but there we go that stays there and the kit itself so this kit i don't know exactly when it first came out uh obviously a quick have a look at some of these screws to see but it's not a spring chicken this kit let's just say it like that it has been around a little while but hopefully you'll see here if we just drop this middle can down nice and close <clears throat> you can actually see you do get some extremely nice recessed details now I, you know i'm not saying i was around building these when they first came out because chances are i wasn't okay but uh definitely i remember getting my hands on these in the uh, well, late 90s for the first time and it was like wow look at the detail the recess it's so crisp so nice and today it's still holding up just as well as when we did the f-104 starfighter literally a couple of weeks ago when we finished that one as we were saying 
it still holds up there today against anything that any of the other manufacturers are bringing out. Okay, so anything that Hobby Boss bring out or Trumpeter or anything else, these kits are still in good stead. So as you can see, although they don't have moving uh, parts and things like that and positionable flaps and rudders and everything, they certainly have all the detail. So again, not the biggest of jets, because obviously, as we know, the Sabre wasn't that big, but as you can say, it's big on detail, lots of lovely recesses and various different parts in there as well. So down here, we can see the nose, we've got a beautifully cast nose down there. We've got the actual dive brakes. I think it's again, nice detail on the inside without an ejector pin on the inside. Okay, again, no ejector pin on the insides of the doors. Any of those as we make our way through, they're all beautifully done. And we've got the tail planes over there as well. As you can see, we've got a nice level of detail still in this cockpit and nose wheel well as well. Okay, so you don't really have to run out and buy tons and tons of extras for it. Okay, so as you can see down here, we've got the actual cockpit itself. So we've got the cockpit tub, some nice details in there just like that. Let me just pull this guy of the camera right down. Okay, so hopefully you can see them on the other camera. We've got some nice details in there like that. And generally, as you say, some of these parts we're gonna lose, so the rudder pedals and that, they go, head, things like that. But say we've got the actual uh, landing light system down here. Okay, and all the areas, and again, there's that beautiful work. And that lovely internal detail molded in there for the actual uh, dive brake there, or the yes, speed brakes. These are your FOD covers we were looking at, and again, they are really, really nice. Okay, so if you did want to pop some FOD covers on it, if you remove four flight tags, have it in the power down position, then you'll go, away you go. Okay, two types of flight helmet as well. Okay, so you've got the one with the, the actual shield over the top, uh, the protective cover, or the earlier one which didn't. So it's literally, you know, had the glass on the outside. All right, so you've got that standard figure uh, with posable hand down there. Again, gear not too bad at all. All right, no problems with any of that. And it is amazing, we're looking back at these older kits now, to be fair, that they just stand up so well and they are just as good as anything that's coming out at the moment. So again, you can see on the wing sections there, beautiful detail, nice and smooth. Again, because it's Hasegawa's plastic, it's very hard, it's very crisp, it's very polished. So let's face it, when we come along here for your metal finishes, and if you were gonna go down my route, I'll be using your AKs or your Vallejo metal colors, things like that, then you know they're gonna be very, very nice, okay? So there we go, that is looking absolutely fantastic. Some beautiful little details in there, okay? And the lower wing, so again, we've got some nice details down here in the cockpit itself. And as you can see, catching on the light, beautiful recessed panel lines and everything else. So I'm not saying don't, but certainly I'd be careful about opening up these forward uh, bays down here, okay? Uh, this one, as I say, it's the F, so it's, you know, sort of mid-life, but uh, definitely be careful how you do it. Obviously, if you're doing later versions of it in markings, then you'll be good, but be careful with this particular sidewinder, okay? So, wheels, again, very nice one-piece, uh, sorry, two-piece split, but as I say, one-piece tire and hub, very nice details in those. These are actually your drop tanks or your wing fuel tanks, very nicely done. Again, no problem with any of those. Okay, that is just a duplicate, okay, of that one. Then we've actually got the details down here. So obviously we've got the uh, intake system just down in here. Again, some nice blade details and everything else like that and the shot cone on the front. And then we've got the exhaust as well with the back end compressor blades and things like that. Then you've got your exhaust and intakes. And as I remember correctly, you do have ejector pin marks through them. To be honest, it wouldn't take much. A skinny stick in there would do the trick absolutely fantastic with no problem at all just to put them in there. They go out exceptionally quickly, no problem with that. And the tailpipe again, you could do those, but if you're using fold covers, then let's face it, you're not going to need it. Then we'd have the clear parts, which since I haven't built this kit for quite a while, say Rebel was the last time I did it. Uh, so you do have a very fine center seam. I don't know how well the camera pick it up, but you do have molded in the striping down the back end, okay? So that is all in there just like that, no problem at all. The front one, beautiful crystal clear on all these parts, no problems whatsoever with all of those. And that is it. As I said, it's a bit of a blast from the past from these kits because they're very much 90s kits. They were like state of the art back then and absolutely beautiful to work with. And from a person like me that was coming from your airfix background and stuff like that, suddenly be getting hold of, you know, Hasegawa was mainstream in the UK, 
just being able to get it really, really easily down the local hobby shop, things like that. It was like, wow. To be honest, it still stands up now. Here we are 20 years later and it's just as good as anything else that I've got over there in the stash. You know, these kits hold up really, really well. So if you are thinking about going for a Sabre, the limited edition one like this is definitely a route to go down purely because you get all the goodies with it that you're ever going to need and some of the prettiest markings that are available for the Sabre as well. So there we go. That is Eddard's Rebox of the Hasegawa F86F Sabre a definite must-have.